Hi, today I want to start telling you about uh, my research area and, and some of the things that go on there. Um, so in particular, this is a introduction to the local Langlands program. Um, there's timestamps, of course, to navigate the sections, um, but I want to get a few things out of the way first. Um, I, I want to let you know about how to watch this video, let's say. Uh, so in the very first section where I start going into details, I'm going to be introducing this by motivating it from the Global Langlands Program, uh, which I gave a very sweeping things under the rug uh, uh, talk about that recently. Um, however, it's not strictly necessary uh, for you to have seen, uh, uh, for me to uh, introduce this through the global part. So you can use the timestamps to skip that um, if you're really unfamiliar with all of that material. Uh, the second thing is even if you skip that, um, I'm going to be saying a lot of words in the next part where I really start talking about the local language correspondence uh, that you could possibly be unfamiliar with. Now, one thing I want to suggest is don't just shy away from this immediately. Um, I'm still pretty inexperienced in this area, but one thing I'm starting to come to the conclusion of is that um, about 90% of people who start studying the Langlands program don't have the background to start studying the Langlands program. It's complicated. There's a lot of different things going on. And I think if you want to uh, get into it, even just casually, um, I, I, I think part of what you need to do is just be uncomfortable with not understanding some of the words at first and just sort of, you know, letting these layers of, of abstraction wash over you until things start to fall into place. Um, so in this first video, there's going to be a lot of words I'm not going to define here. I will talk about eventually as I release more videos in the series. So I just wanted to, to let you know that as well. If things seem really crazy at first, um, that's just kind of how it is. So anyways, uh, uh, let's let's dive into things here and start talking about the local language correspondence. Okay, so as promised, I'm, I'm first going to introduce this from the perspective of, of the global theory. So if you've uh, seen my, my other video on the global language program, um, we talked about, you know, uh, as sort of at the end, I said, you know, in general, we're gonna have some sort of group um, valued in the Adels, and, and I only talked about the Adels, the Adelic group for the rational numbers, uh, but it turns out if you have E, some um, algebraic extension, some number field, an algebraic extension of the rational numbers, you can actually play this game of defining the, the Adels again. Um, it turns out that instead of getting these p-adic norms for each prime, you can actually get a norm for each prime ideal in the ring of integers of the field extension E. So, so the, the components of this look like uh, the rational numbers, but instead of completed along some, some prime, it's completed along some sort of uh, prime ideal. Um, okay. And, and uh, in turn, I mean, these things really just end up uh, being, you can realize them as uh, extensions of the piatic uh, numbers themselves. So, so this is more general uh, version of the Adels that exist. And uh, you know, one thing I was talking about uh, towards the end is that uh, you know, we're interested in these so-called automorphic forms, um, which arise uh, in some sense as subrepresentations of the right regular representation of this group acting on its L2 space. Okay, um, and, and so, so we have these, these sub-representations here called, uh, uh, the, the ones we care about are the, the, these automorphic representations. And uh, the, the global Langlands correspondence um, was about uh, taking these things and uh, associating them to, and there's, you know, part of the lie comes in here, there's, there's a more general picture, um, but associating them to representations of the absolute uh, Galois group of the rationals. Um, and in particular, there was, um, it, it, it's not just associating representations, but there's a very particular way uh, where we had this, this notion of L function that we could define attached to um, an uh, automorphic representation, as well as a notion of L function we can attach to a Galois representation. Um, and, and those representations that get mapped 
uh, uh, to each other through this correspondence, they should have the same L function. That was sort of part of the, the thing that tied uh, it all together. Um, okay, well, this is a big and, and, and very complicated theory. And uh, now we're sort of gonna go backwards. So before I said, hey, you know, we look at all these uh, completions of, of the rational numbers, let's study them all together. And, and we're able to, you know, package it up into this nice thing, gives us the global Langlands correspondence. Um, but now we might say, well, wait a second, can we just now break this correspondence up again? And, and does it have a relevance for the different piadic pieces? And of course, when I'm saying piadic here, I also include, uh, you know, the real and, and, and complex numbers. Um, and it turns out, yes. So, so it turns out, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, you, you know, these, these groups, if, if you like some concrete examples are like GLN, um, valued in these Adele's or SLN uh, valued in these Adele's or uh, any of your favorite uh, matrix groups, for example. Um, and so it turns out that actually uh, we can break this down again and we can look at instead uh, uh, this group itself sort of breaks up as this, as this product of, uh, of these Q P, so um, uh, this is, you know, P, a, a, a prime ideal here. So maybe you could think of it as, as F. And uh, in turn, this representation, you end up being able to write it as a, as a tensor product of representations um, over each of these, uh, the piadic points of this group G. So, so this could look like things, you know, like GLN, of QP or SLN uh, of QP uh, corresponding to what's happening in, in the global case. So now we found a way to sort of break things up again, right? We have these global representations and now I can break these up uh, into these local components. Great. Um, and in particular, there is a way, uh, uh, so, so this correspondence, again, it's not just about matching up representations, but it's about matching up representations uh, with some sort of consistency with these L functions. And so it turns out that uh, these L functions uh, can also be uh, broken down. So, so that is this um, automorphic L function uh, can be written as a product of uh, you know, what are called uh, uh, local L functions. So, so each of these um, representations of the uh, piadic points for, for varying P of, of this group, um, there's a notion of L functions for those. And it turns out that actually there's also a nice formula for that. We can just sort of take the product of these factors. Um, I'm leaving a couple things out here. There's, there's sort of like good prime ideals and bad prime ideals. And, and at the bad ones, we have to do something different. But uh, essentially, this is, this is what's um, going on here. OK. Um, and, and now we want to think, OK, so, so we can break up this automorphic side. Um, and study instead of these full adelic things, uh, we can study these piadic representations of groups. So that's eventually what I'm going to focus on is, is the more general piadic representation theory. Um, of course, we're interested um, mainly from the global perspective uh, in terms of those representations that specifically appear as a factor in an automorphic representation. Um, however, in some of the future videos, I'm going to talk about piadic representation theory more generally, and eventually I'll discuss some of the things like, you know, how can we classify those representations that actually arise as some sort of uh, automorphic factor. Okay, so what does the local Langlands correspondence actually uh, say? So it's, it's going to be a correspondence that, that um, sort of picks out these individual factors. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about that actual uh, correspondence, the, the local piece of it. Um, so the, the local Langlands correspondence um, is about a relationship between two sets. So we have capital uh, pi G and capital phi of G. So what are these objects? Uh, well, the left-hand side is, isn't, uh, isn't, isn't too bad. 
Um, so, so G in general, um, we let this be a connected uh, reductive. So this is an important term I'll, I'll define in, in later videos, uh, p-adic uh, uh, group, right? So it's, it's going to be some sort of group like GLN of QP or something defined over the, the p-adic numbers. Um, and this set, pi of G, uh, contains uh, uh, the, the elements of the set are uh, irreducible, smooth, um, so just nice, right? There's some sort of topology going on. So smooth sort of accounts for this nice uh, topological um, condition as well. So here we have a smooth irreducible representations um, of the group G. And we're going to be lining these up um, with these uh, uh, over here, this collection is, well, technically equivalence classes of, but we'll get into the details later, um, of things that are called Langlands parameters. So these are just uh, group homomorphisms uh, that are, in a sense, mimicking uh, uh, Galois. They're not quite Galois representations, although sometimes they will be. Um, but it's a little more, it's a little more complicated. So uh, this group WF prime here, uh, this is actually a, a product. Um, and I know this seems so weird and, and chaotic uh, starting off, but this is a product where uh, WF is, is something called the Vey group. Uh, and it lives inside the Galois group of the closure of our piatic field. And this is just SL2C. Uh, this group, this is called the Langlands group. Uh, it is, uh, there's some sort of notion of, of dual group. Uh, if you know Poitriagin du duality, this isn't that, even though it's the same notation. Um, and, uh, and this is a semi-direct product now uh, with, with the uh, full Galois group. So uh, this looks pretty complicated and random. Uh, but in later videos, um, uh, you know, so it might be like, why is this? The local Langlands correspond. Why is this the, the, the right choice to look at? Um, so per, perhaps in later videos, um, I'm going to say something about how uh, coming from nature, as mathematicians like to say, uh, there's a notion of um, uh, you know uh, piatic uh, uh, Galois representations, right? So so um, you know, instead of just our, 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 our normal representations on, on complex vector spaces, uh, we have these, these um, uh, representations of, of uh, the, the absolute Galois group on the piatic numbers. And uh, these sort of arise naturally, say, in the uh, study of, of elliptic curves. And this is, you know, re relevance to uh, fancy theorems like uh, uh, for Matt's last theorem, which I mentioned in, in the previous video, the modularity theorem. Um, and, and it turns out that there is a, a correspondence between uh, these things that I've called Langlands parameters, uh, these uh, piatic uh, Galois representations, and uh, something that I'm going to call Vedeline representations. Uh, so all these things sort of uh, correspond to each other. I'll, I'll explain it later on. Uh, but they're all sort of different um, perspectives uh, uh, on, on the local Langlands correspondence. I would argue in some sense, this is, is, is more natural, but there's advantages and disadvantages to, to all of these different perspectives that we'll get into. So uh, the local Langlands correspondence, uh, it, it, it predicts that there's some way of taking uh, smooth irreducible representations of a, of a nice piatic group um, and, and getting these you know, special homomorphisms that have that have something to do with the Galois group. Not quite Galois representations in, in general, but somewhere in the ballpark. And uh, furthermore, um, it, it predicts that, that we can break this set up um, into uh, finite um, subsets. So these are these are fibers of, of this. Uh, sometimes we did note this R, call it the Langlands reciprocity map. Um, so so basically, uh, capital pi sub phi of G. This is just all of those smooth irreducible representations that get associated to one particular um, Langlands parameter phi. And uh, the Langlands correspondence predicts that each of these little packages are finite. 
and that there is a way to, to line up these uh, finite packages um, um, with the, there's a special finite groups that are sort of inherent to the group G that we started with. Um, and we look at the representations of that. In particular, I mean, this is a finite group. So uh, basically the, the study boils down to the study of its characters. And so uh, by S sub phi hat, I mean here the, the characters. So <laughs> I know this looks so crazy, but uh, I'm going to be making more videos to break this down and try and make more sense of it. Uh, but this is what the local Langlands correspondence says. It, 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 it's a way to line up smooth irreducible representations of nice groups defined over the piatic numbers and line them up with special homomorphisms relating to Galois groups. Um, and there's these other finite conditions. We'll get into more particular forms of this uh, later on, uh, uh, but that does it for this video. I'm gonna leave it here. So thanks a lot for watching. And as always, let me know if you have some questions down below.